James 3.16 declares, for we're envying, which we know is is all over sports, envying. I want to be better than you. You want to be better than me. We want to be better than that guy over there. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Have you ever noticed after many big games are won, what goes on? Revelry. What is revelry? Excessive partying. Sometimes the college kids go out and they burn things. They turn over cars. Sometimes they go out and they get drunk. They start popping wine and throwing wine all over each other when they win the World Series or a Super Bowl. They kiss these trophies. Why do they do that? They do that for their own glory. They do that to glorify themselves, to glorify their efforts, to glorify their striving for superiority. They've obtained it. People's hearts are broken when they lose. People are saddened when they lose. Whole cities will put their whole morale into an athlete or into their sports team. A city that is run down, where men are beating their wives and drunken and and they have no personal identity. They have no love in their hearts. How do they derive pleasure? By seeing their team. Most of these team members aren't even from the city. They're just there to represent the city. And the, the city is living vicariously through this sports team. They're living through this sports team. And that tells us something, that idolatry is at work. So rather than finding their value in Christ Jesus, no, they're finding their value in a team that represents them in conquest against another city. So my team is better than your team. So I feel better about myself, even though I have not God, even though I have not love of God. I feel better about me than you do about you because if you and I get into a conversation, I'm going to let you know that my team is better than your team and they represent me. So obviously I'm better than you because I am a, I am represented by a better group of people who wear the name of my city on their chests. That's idolatry. In Philippians 2, 3, the word of God says, let nothing, let no thing be done through strife or vain glory. The glory of a championship is totally vain. It is worthless to have a championship ring. It is worthless to be better than your neighbor at basketball or football or any other competitive sport. It is worthless. And God compels us to do nothing through vainglory or for vainglory or through strife. God is commanding us to repent, commanding us to turn from carnality, turn from the works of the flesh. The Bible calls strife a work of the flesh. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So God commands us to walk after the spirit and not after the lusts, the excessive desires to be better than others or to justify yourself or to claim strength or to prove yourself as noble or worthy or great. This is idolatry. This is pride. This is strife. This is the principle of Lucifer, the very first opponent in existence. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Can you imagine how effective an athlete would be if when he stepped onto a basketball court or a tennis court or a rugby field or a soccer field and said, these people are all better than me, and I hope they succeed. Can you imagine a person who steps onto a football field and hopes his opponents succeed? Have you ever seen a team holding hands and hoping to conjure up some force, some emotional force to get one kicker, hoping that the kicker on the opposing team will miss the field goal? hoping that they will make the field goal? How godly is that? And then now we want to get together afterwards and we want to pray. And we feel like because we put God's stamp on it, oh, God is okay. God loves it. Your thoughts are not the thoughts of God. Jesus said, you are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed, for that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the eyes of God. Concerning trophies, 
Trophies are graven images crafted in honor of the victor or the winner. Therefore, they are idols because they give praise to the athlete and not to God. Now, a trophy is a graven image, okay? There are sculptures that aren't instruments of worship. A trophy is an instrument of worship. When people win trophies, they kiss the trophies, they hoist the trophies, they ride around the city with the trophies. The trophies represent that they are a conqueror. The trophy represents them. It does not represent God. It has nothing to do with God. The trophies, even back in the day, in antiquity or in the times of old, the trophies were put in a city after a victory to give homage to the God that gave them that victory. And obviously, since we know that sports and competition did not come from heaven, it came from hell, it came from the way of Lucifer, then obviously the God that they were trying to glorify was not the God of the Bible. Was not the God of the Bible. Now, when David killed Goliath and he took his head, that was an honor to God because God gave David the victory because this guy was blaspheming God and he disdained David. David approached him, not because the man was saying anything to him, but because the man was saying something against the Lord. And David said, you defied the armies of Israel. And those are the armies of God, man. I'm going to take your head from you today. And he killed this man, not because this man rose up against him, but because this man rose up against God. See, the people of God fight the Lord's battles. They don't fight their own battles. The Lord fights the people's battles, and we fight the Lord's battles. That's why Paul could say, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So you're not going to see true Christians in ultimate fighting. You're not going to see true Christians boxing or destroying another man's temple. His body is the temple of the living God. You're not allowed to punch this guy in the face for money. You're not allowed to punch this guy in the face for entertainment. That's unclean. How do you manifest? How do you manifest God that way? When you evangelize to you after you wake up from the smelling sauce, that's unclean. That's unholy. We need to repent from that. Sin will bring death. Period. Sin will bring death. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Concerning these graven images that are objects of worship. Exodus 20, verse 4 and 5 state this. You shall not make unto you any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down yourself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them who hate me. Now, that's the old covenant law, but what does that reveal? It reveals that we are not allowed to make graven images as objects of worship. You are not allowed to do that. That is profane. That is idolatry. So those trophies you have of yourself as a, a little karate master, when you got your black belt in, in, in martial arts, which is witchcraft manifest in what they call self-defense, that's an idol to you. You are the God that that trophy is in honor to. You are the God that that trophy is in honor to. Okay? 